Phil. She thinks her husband's cheating. I found empty Cialis bottles. Are you jumping to conclusions? I was in a sexless marriage. There was no conclusion. So many suspicions. You said he's a sex addict. I think he is. Just not with me. So many signs. I read on your website, if a man's disconnected from his family, he's probably cheating. So many accusations. My mother thought my father had stole her keys. Your keys are in your pocket. The keys were in the hamper. They weren't in my pocket. So little restraint. Did she break your nose? She fractured it. They can go to a doctor. There was no diagnosis. You smashed the windows. You threw candelabras through them. They needed to be replaced anyway. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. Take I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Samantha was so tired of her parents arguing every day that she finally grabbed her cell phone and recorded this video. There's more strength inside me my adrenaline gets going? I really don't care. I'm just telling you. It doesn't matter to me. I'm telling you that. I feel like the laid above it. You won't have nothing to haul. What would make a wife so angry that she would threaten to cut off her husband's manhood like Lorena Bobbitt? Well, Dorothy says she became suspicious of her husband, Bob, after finding some dating websites in his email and empty medication bottles for erectile dysfunction under the bed. So she decided to do a little investigating. Take a look. I'm convinced that my husband has been cheating on me. I believe he's meeting women online and trying to hide it from me. I was watching an episode of Dr. Phil on how to keep your children safe on the internet. So I decided to check our household computer's history and came up with various sites that were pertaining to cheating and hooking up with women. I've seen Ashley Madison, hookupnow.com. I found naked pictures of young women sending him emails. Bob and I have been in a sexless relationship for about two and a half years. I found two empty Cialis bottles for erectile dysfunction, one under the mattress and one deep in the drawer. I was changing the bed sheets and I put my hand underneath the bed and as I did, I felt something and what I pulled out was the empty Cialis bottle. He wasn't using them with me. I don't cheat, Dorothy. Pornography will destroy well, you, your I don't life. want to hear your crap. Look I really your don't. Your life is being destroyed by it. By you. He convinced me it was spam. I said to him, is everything spam? How much spam can there be? Bob and I fight at least three, four times a week. I could be capable of murder. I'm telling you, I could. I know that about me. Bob knows how to trigger my anger. Go away, Dorothy. Break all the cops. We have both gotten physical with each other. The worst fight, he grabbed me by the throat and he started punching my arm. The bruising lasted six weeks. The next day, I went and filed a police report. Bob and I do argue in front of Samantha and Alice. You're a running around telling you you're right. full of right. Bob is a liar. He frustrates me terribly. I do love my husband, and I hate him in the same breath. In my heart, I know my husband's been sleeping around. Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to tell you what really bothers me about all of that. But first, Bob says his life is now a living hell. And he blames one person for it. Me. <laughs> Take a look. I am not cheating on my wife. Never would. Never could. Supporting someone else. Oh, that's absolutely ridiculous. This is absolutely harassment. The Dr. Phil show has contributed to destroying my marriage. My wife had watched a Dr. Phil episode. The show was how to catch a cheating spouse. My wife decided to check our household computer's history and claims that she found dating websites and that gave my wife some ideas that I might be the one cheating. My wife has been using the computer as a weapon of mass destruction against our relationship. My wife thinks that my spam email is my real email and that I do respond and converse with these people. She thinks that I am fully involved 
in prostitutes in some way, shape, form, or manner on a regular basis. No prostitutes are real. Uh, no, Dorothy, not. She is constantly monitoring my every move. She has purchased a cell phone wiretap. My wife has actually even followed me and spied on me in an effort fully to find me cheating. It has escalated to the point of telling me that I am homosexual, a transvestite, a liar. You've been lying to me for years. Absolutely ridiculous. She could be two inches in your face, cursing and swearing, I'm going to get you. My wife will say that she wishes that I have a heart attack, drop dead, get run over, wishes I would get AIDS. If there is a swear word that's been generated by anyone in human language, she said it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kick me in the face, fracture my nose, rip my face up. My wife has destroyed ashtrays, mugs, several chairs, two laptop computers, my cell phone. She destroyed all the glass in my van with a hammer. Because of our fighting, the police have been called seven times to our household. I do feel that this is a desperate situation. My family is definitely broken. Absolutely, we do need help. I'm gonna figure out if this marriage is even worth saving to a doctor, Phil. So, if... You think, and, and you wrote, and I have your letter okay. here that you wrote to me. Thank you for taking the time to do that. Thank you for reading it. Um, oh, I've read it. Um, it says, Dear Dr. Phil, I write this not to you so that you can understand the problems you have helped cause between my wife and I. You once aired a show sometime in April of 13. It was about computers and husbands cheating on their wives. Since that time, my life has been a living hell. So you then blame me because well, she watched my show about... No, I love your that. show, actually. I think it's a great show. But when she, she took the seed of the show and grew it into, like, Jack and the uh, Beanstalk. I trusted yeah. you for 22 years, up to nine months ago. Hiding Cialis bottles don't help. Well, I don't Anybody they would were be hidden. paranoid. My sock door doesn't really count. To Under the hidden. mattress? Well, if you used them with me, they should have been in the medicine cabinet, not under the mattress, right? Well, he tells me the doctor says, take them on a Friday and hope for the best. Well, did you take them on a Friday and hope for the best while I was in Canada? Absolutely not. You know that. No, I don't know that. Well, I found an empty bottle you when I got back. You should know that. Well, are you jumping to some conclusions here? Dr. Phil I was in a sexless marriage. That's There's all, no conclusions. That's all she ever does is jump to conclusions. You have said that he's gay. Because he was a virgin until he was married at age 29. Dr. Phil, what's so upsetting about this whole thing? Is this, I found gay this pornography on his website. He's the only woman I've ever been with my entire life. 100%. And yeah. in, in, in basically, she's throwing knives at me. It's basically whatever I found. I found gay matter. pornography on your web page. No, well, you hold didn't. on. Let's go through this list. You say he's homosexual because taking erectile dysfunction meds. No, hiding it from his wife. It was number one, uh, how to tell if your husband's gay, does he hide his Cialis or Viagra? That was on the that internet. That was the number too. one on well, the Well, if internet. it was on the internet, we know it has to be right. <laughs> Transvestite, but he was viewing transgender. I never said that. No, I never called well, my... Well, I... I never called my husband a transvestite. You did. Oh, my goodness, that's not you the truth, Dr. Phil. My right hand to God, I never called him a transvestite. Well, that's not what he says. Well, he's not telling the truth. One of us is lying, right? Yes. Uh, it can't be both ways. That's you right. said he's involved with prostitutes. Well, I have them on my phone, sir. You've called him a $2 trick. Absolutely. You says he has escorts in the city. Well, he came home one night and I asked him. He came right out and said, no, I like New York City women. Just like that. You Just said that like he's, that. You said that he's cheating with a Russian whore and Craigslist whores. Well, yes. I can show you That's on my phone. Constantly. I had to start, start taking pictures because he erased Oh, we've it. got the pictures. That's constantly. That's today. That was even and, last night. And you said he's a sex addict. I think he is. Just not with me. <laughs> okay. So, he's, he's gay, transvestite, involved with I, prostitutes. <laughs> he's a cheap prostitute. He has I don't escorts think he's in the a city. Sir. You called him a two dollar trick? What is that? No, I, I, that, I don't know what that means. What I'm saying to you, sir, I think it, it, anything sexual, it takes more and more, not just his wife anymore. Okay. All right. And you say he's cheating with Russian whores and Craigslist whores? I think so. Okay. Bob and Dorothy's oldest daughter says an argument between her and her parents left her bloodied and needing stitches. We're going to talk to her when we come back.
My mom attacks my dad, physically and verbally. She's thrown chairs, scratched his face. You have really got to leave. She wants everybody to be miserable right along with her. Misery loves company. And later... He's been disconnected from his family for three years. I read on your website, if he's disconnected from his family, he's probably cheating. But I told you everything on the website. It was your website. <laughs> it was your website, Dr. Phil. I know. I'm kidding. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, a bitter divorce. We had to provide her wardrobe because you wouldn't let her get her clothes. You won't let me clothes. back in the house. Their child trapped in the middle. He had the audacity to take his own son for a walk. And you say, I'm calling the cops. And the police? I have her physically abused. On speed dial. What'd you throw at him? A pair of stretchy pants. You call the police because she threw stretchy pants at you. <laughs> That's tomorrow. don't believe that my father is having an affair. My mom needs to back off my father and realize that he is not cheating on her. My mom accuses my dad of being gay. My mom accuses my dad of being a transvestite. My mom has accused my father of having Russian whores. My mother thought my father stole her keys after she had a little bit too much to drink one night. She took everything that was on these racks, thousands of dollars of worth of my dad's tools, and threw it out into our driveway. And uh, she got a flat tire because of all the screws and the nails she put out there. And she blamed my dad for it because, you know, he took her keys. They were in her pocket the whole time. She wants everybody to be miserable right along with her. Misery loves company. After my mom stopped talking to me, life got 110% more peaceful. I honestly don't want a relationship with my mother if she continues on with the accusations. My little sister is only 12 years old and you know, she acts as my mother's psychologist. I can't stand seeing her caught in the middle of this. My mom has gone off the deep end completely. I mean, the she says you've gone off the deep end. She's just yelling and screaming at him he's stealing your keys that were in your pocket. The keys, the keys were in the hamper. They weren't in my pocket. They were in my hamper. But he didn't have them. No, I didn't have them. At 8.15 in the morning, Sunday morning, she barges in the door, I mean barged in, starts kicking me, punching me, kicking me, and punching me, and making a big ruckus about the fact that I took her keys. And I knew I did not take those keys. Um, there was no possible way because I wasn't even there. Were you wrong? I was. Okay, but you've... you've... And I apologize. Oh, well. Samantha says her mom, Dorothy, has severe anger issues and screams nonstop. My mom attacks my dad physically and verbally on a daily basis. You gotta say, oh, go out and have sex with a no, no, all this no, money. No, 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 but if no, you no, don't, no, you're not getting no, money. Dorothy, nothing to do with it because I don't do that. She's extremely violent. She's thrown chairs, scratched his face. You have really got to leave. I have a tendency to break and destroy things in anger. I broke two picture windows. I smashed every window out of my husband's van with a hammer. I broke this one, this one, his driver's side, and the front windshield. She has smashed two of his laptop computers. She has super glued his phone shut and put it in glasses of water because she was angry at him. When I was 16, she threw a blender at me. She threw the pitcher full of margaritas at me and split my face open over my left eye. There's blood everywhere. I still have a scar over my left eye. They're lasting images. They're burned into my mind. I'll never forget them. Okay. When you see all of that together, does it seem, it seems reasonable behavior? I, I, in fact, I made a list of, of what I consider to be erratic behavior. In 2007, it's reported that you hit your daughter, Samantha, in the face with a pitcher, which she just said. In June of 13, you got home drunk at 3 a.m., had a fight with Bob and Samantha. On the 18th of July of last year, you clawed his face. Right. Um, and you, you claimed that he fractured your rib. On 7-13, you accused Bob of being in hijinks with a postal worker. That's on right. August 13th, you threw all of his clothes outside over the railing. 
On August 2nd, you threw and broke a chair and then called the police. On 8-12, you left a hostile message for Samantha that said, you need to get your blank out of my house or else. Then in September, you made Bob take a polygraph test. He passed. But he also had a missing Kalata pen. So there's But suspicion. you still accused him of cheating. On 9-18, you accused him of sending an email to a woman and you smashed the windows at Samantha's house. Two five-foot picture windows and you threw candelabras through them? He told me I could be in charge of three Cialis pills. He took a Cialis pill, disappeared that day at 2.30 and didn't show up. We had a date that night that we, he didn't show up for. And so your theory is the way to handle was, this I is know. to throw candelabras wrong. through two, not one, but two, two five-foot it needed to be replaced anyway, uh, sir. No, no, Dr. F <laughs> Dr. Phil. The sashes were rotted. Dr. I figured Phil. I'd just move it along. These were quarter... They really did need to be replaced. This was serious. This quarter-inch plate glass. I know I shouldn't have done it. That same month, you got your daughter again involved in your marital and adult issues. This is the older daughter. Tried to get her to help install phone monitoring equipment. I did, but I was unsuccessful. So you could tap his phone. Exactly. Yes, sir, I did. Okay, and then in December, you followed him to the store to spy on him. Absolutely not. Never followed my husband once in my life. Okay, so you tried to bug his phone. You threw candelabras through the windows. Yes. You, you, you say all of that, but you didn't follow him to uh, the store. So my right hand to God. Dr. Phil, she went to my van, grabbed my cell phone first. Sure. Then went in the store with sure. my cell phone. That's analyzed right. everything on the cell phone. Absolutely. Left the store, threw the f my cell phone That's across the parking lot. You started this problem, honey, by hiding those pills. How'd you should I have never done that. I trusted you for 22 years. I ne that man could come home with his underwear in his head and I wouldn't ask him where he was. This past nine months, I don't trust you. No I'm, more. I'm done. I'm not done yet. <laughs> on the 22nd, you smashed the windows out of his truck. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Then on January 12th, New Year, let's start fresh, right? So you hit Bob in the nose during an argument and yeah, she she break did. your nose? She fractured it. How do you know yeah. it was fractured? Because there was blood coming out. He didn't hurt. go to a doctor. There was no diagnosis. It hurt for two weeks. He said that he doesn't. He doesn't. Please. Yes, he didn't it. even have a bruise. I don't. On 119, a week later, you kicked and punched him in front of your 12 year old daughter. No, uh, I don't recall you that. You took Bob's work tools, including a $1,000 sprayer, heaters, nails, screws, dumped it all in the driveway of the house. I did, but I put it all back. I picked everything up. I apologized, and I put everything back. I apologized for doing it. It was because it punctured your tire. Sir, he knows how to trigger me. He plays me like a fiddle, sir. This is your marriage. Oh, I know. It's actually is. It's a it, mess. It, it does kind of indicate it. Looks yeah, it does, doesn't yeah. it? It's a yeah. little symbolic. You're smashing windows out of houses and cars and kicking and punching him and then going, oh, <laughs> never mind, found him. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. What, what the hell is that? And that's what you've done with me. I said, did you throw candelabras through the windows? You said, yeah, but they were old. They needed to get replaced anyway. So, you, the fascia was bad. They, they were needed to be replaced anyway. So therefore, it's okay for you to be standing out in the yard in the middle of the night throwing candles through picture windows. It wasn't okay. Dorothy says Bob has made six figures over the last three years, but they still don't have enough money to buy groceries. We're going to find out what Dorothy thinks happened to all that money. Bob has made over $400,000, and we're still broke, and he has not made a mortgage payment on this house in three years. I beg to differ with that statement. I think he spent it on escorts. And later... He emailed somebody from Craigslist that wanted to buy a tire, wishing them Merry Christmas on the 16th of December. You know I didn't wish anybody a Merry Christmas. I got it on my phone, Dr. Phil. Who wishes somebody Merry Christmas that wants to buy a tire? Oh, what a rat bastard. <laughs> To wish somebody He's Merry Christmas. My wife's rage gets magnified many times over when she's drunk. I ran for 22 years because you were never here. You ran for 22 years because you're an alcoholic. My wife drinks every single day. 
she could get quite tipsy five out of seven nights in a week. The most I've seen her is drink, 18 pack of beer. My wife is absolutely 100% out of control. Well, that was Bob talking about his wife, Dorothy's out of control drinking. Now, after watching an episode of my show about a husband whose infidelity caused his family to go into financial ruin, Dorothy started accusing Bob of spending all of their money on other women. She says Bob has been sucking money out of their bank account like a vacuum. He just says that's the pot calling the kettle black because Dorothy is the one overspending and misusing money. Take yeah. a look. My family is now in financial ruin. Bob has made over $400,000 in the last three years. And we're still broke, and he has not made a mortgage payment on this house in three years. We don't give a about your family, our happiness, or any, oh, anything really? else. Yeah, we'll make you think that All happens. you care about is sucking money out of the account like no. a vacuum. Dorothy thinks that I put our family into financial ruin. I beg to differ with that statement. Economic conditions are to blame for that. In six months, he had pulled out $33,000 in cash. I think he spent it on escorts. The fact is, my family is broke. I'm not quite sure where all this money is going. I confronted him about it. He told me it's his life. He does the work. Mind my business. He can spend his money the way he deems fit. Did he tell you he drinks as well? This is the problem. Your behavior is so over the top right. that you just don't have any credibility. And it's not just him that thinks this. Your daughter, Samantha, is concerned about it as well, right? Well, she's in his pocket, sir. Really? Samantha, yeah. are you there? Yes. Your, your mother says that the only reason you're critical is because you're in your father's pocket, and I guess that means that your behavior is not erratic. Is that no, what you're saying? No, Daddy's about to buy her a vehicle when we can't afford to put oil in our tank. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, Samantha, the Dad floor is, is yours. All right, Dad is about to put his credit on the line so that I can make payments on a vehicle. Really, you're living in my rental free of charge. You ran up a $600 electric bill. You don't have a job, sweetheart. You're in your dad's pocket. Well, I'm certainly not She's going to live with you. <laughs> you broke the windows out of your rental house on my birthday. September 7th was the actual date. Sixth. Seventh. My birthday's the seventh, Mom. Mm -hmm. I broke, it was the sixth. It was a Friday night. Kid Rock concert. It was concert. the seventh. The seventh Friday Whatever. night. In my birthday theory. was do, Friday, was, the do, seventh. Do you really think it's about the clock? Sir, you know what? It's, it's not. not about the clock. Or do you but think you it's about what? the fact that your daughter is inside a house where you're busting the windows out? But you know what? He, she pulled a knife on me, and on the way down over the stairs, she had said to my daughter, Alice, if you side with your mom, I will death you. The police put a restraining order against Samantha themselves for her because saying that. Because she cannot that. put up with your madness anymore. You, you sure. know what my daughter called me this morning, Dr. Phil? An a bitch. bitch. That's a Because I asked her, did she put Absolutely. water down for my dogs? But what did she say, Samantha? She called me a retard. There we go. Can I, can I jump in here for a minute, the three of you? Because, first off, the use of that word is offensive to my I sensibilities. That's true. Um, yes. I mean, that's, that's not okay. I just can't let that pass. I'm sorry. You need to take that out of your vocabulary. You apparently but have he didn't ask plenty her of other speak. choices. What? He didn't say you shouldn't speak to your mom that way. Dorothy believes Bob is sending encrypted messages to other women through his Craigslist ads. We'll take a look at his ads and find out what they really say when we come back. He gets an email that says, Babe, I guess you're not getting any of my email, huh? Thanks. I told you I was here to help. Okay. <laughs> and later, your daughter is back in the green room. I'd like to go back and visit with her for just a minute. You'll be able to Absolutely. see it out here. Everybody, you'll be able to watch this. I'm just going to step back, talk to her, sure. and I'll be right back. Okay. Absolutely. All right. yes. You guys will be able to watch on the monitors here. You clicked around in the spam. No, I didn't click around in spam. This was in your email. It wasn't spam. Mm -hmm. And those people on that friggin' site didn't look a day over 15, pal. Okay, whatever. That's it why I forwarded it to the FBI. Okay, so you, let, let me be sure I've got the sequence right here. So you're watching my show, thank you. 
I appreciate you doing that. And you see me talking to parents and then a wife about looking at the computer, and you can see where your kids have been, and you can see the history, history like school that. and so forth. Yes. So you decide it's time for you to become engaged with a computer, so there might be some information you want. I checked the history. You checked the history. Okay. Now, one of the things, I, I was able to actually put some of this stuff up. This, he calls this spam, and you're like, how much spam can there be, right? Oh, I mean, come on. Um, because he gets an email that says, babe, I guess you're not getting any of my email, huh? I've been trying to email you so many times, but this damn laptop is such a piece of garbage and keeps freezing. Anyways, how you been? Well, I've never seen that before. So well, that's one of them. Off okay. of the you can add that to your list. Okay. Uh, thanks. That's off. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I told you I was here to help. <laughs> okay. Um, and you've seen like you've seen them like this, right? I've seen several things. Yeah, but here, here's the problem with this. This is that very same passage. We found it in 14 different places. This is a form email that is sent out trying to get people to respond so people can get their addresses so they can start working to hack their computer. This is, in fact, spam. Okay. And you say, how much spam is there? Well, y we all get them. This is my personal cell phone. Right. And this is from last night. These are all of the spam emails that I got just last night. In your, in your regular email? Yes. So you don't have to this, go to your spam to get them. No, this, I have email. a filter that takes them out. Okay. Stimulate your body to impress women. <laughs> Dear DPM, don't miss your 60% off. And God only knows what is 60% off of. Then your theory was, okay, he's posting on Craigslist and you said these are encrypted. No, I never said the Craigslist were encrypted. Yes, you did. Uh, no, I didn't. You said the emails for snowmobile and selling a Ford no. were actually contacts. Sir, what I said, yes, you I, did. Br I went to WinZip and I brought back 30,000 erased files. And I couldn't read them, so I got the Geek Squad to come in to help me read them. They told me before they were erased, they were encrypted. The Craigslist got nothing to do with encryption. Doctor. What's your problem and with the Craigslist? You was, did say it was encrypted, was, by the way, but what is your, look, give was, us your new problem. Well, there was 50 or 50 or so um, um, email contacts, yeah. and they were all in reference to a, to the snowmobiles, a tire, and a van. Well, she thinks they're And the snowmobiles, nobody came up our driveway to look at those. But that's what I mean. You think they're a front. I think they're a front of a some front. sort. You think these are a front. So he's putting this up to sell this and... It's a front for what? Because you notice down here, he even clicked, do <coughs> not contact me with unsolicited services or offers. Get a load of this. He emailed somebody from Craigslist that wanted to buy a tire, wishing them Merry Christmas on the 16th of, of I December. I didn't wish, uh, you know I didn't wish anybody a Merry Christmas. I got it on my phone, Dr. Phil. Who wishes somebody Merry Christmas that wants to buy a tire? Well, what a rat bastard. <laughs> To wish somebody he's Merry a stranger, Christmas. A complete stranger. Dr. Phil, you know what? I've, he's been disconnected from his family for three years. Not straight. saying he hasn't been. I'm just saying and you're not. I read on your website how to tell the man's cheating. If he's disconnected from his family, he's probably cheating. That man doesn't take me out to dinner, Dr. Phil. Uh, but I told you everything on the website. It was your website. <laughs> It was your website, Dr. Phil. I know. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. Next, we're going to find out why Dorothy believes an anti-anxiety medication played a huge role in Bob passing a polygraph exam. Plus, what their youngest daughter, Alice, said about their fighting. I have seen my mom and dad punch each other, kick each other. My dad did break my mom's rib. I have even saw them bite each other, which I think that's got way out of hand. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. When 
to a refuge place for abused men. A battered husband? What'd you throw at him? A pair of stretchy pants. You call the police because she threw stretchy pants at you. That's tomorrow. I have, at my wife's request, taken a lie detector test to prove that I've never cheated on her, and I passed it with 100% certainty. She's the one who paid for the polygraph. She believed the results and was quite happy for about a period of 5.8 days. Now she claims that I took a drug to counteract and fool the lie detector test. She is still accusing me of cheating on her. Well, Bob says he's done everything he can to prove to his wife that he is not cheating. He even agreed to take a polygraph test. She picked the polygraph operator. He says he passed with flying colors, but that was not enough to convince Dorothy that her husband was not stepping out. Now, let's take a look. Results across the board, no deception. Right. He, he, he passed with flying colors. Right. Here it is. You see it right there. Kalataplan lowered his blood pressure, and that he could have easily passed the test. Listen, I and your up. theory is that if you take an anti-anxiety med, a Kalataplan, yes, that you would then pass a polygraph. I looked it up, and it said yes, it can affect the outcome. Their 12-year-old daughter Alice says she has witnessed her parents punch, kick, and even bite each other. Let's hear from her real quick. Well, my parents fighting is like a day-to-day -day basis. Every five minutes, they'll find something to argue about. This is sure. The fighting has kept me up almost all night. One incident, it was extremely persistent all the way to three in the morning. No way for to I missed school the next day because of it. I have seen my mom and dad say numerous horrible things to each other. My mom calls my dad a $2 trick. My dad has told my mom to go kill herself. They always say, look at what you're doing in front of your daughter. They will say things like, if we got a divorce, who would you like to go with? I would just say, come on guys, please stop. There's not much I could really do because of course they're adults. I have seen my mom and dad punch each other, kick each other. My dad did break my mom's rib. I even saw them bite each other, which I think that's got way out of hand. I have seen my mom and dad get physical to the point where the cops have been called. I thought that one of my parents was going to be taken away to jail. All I want to do is get away from the arguing. No matter what I do, what I try, they will not stop fighting no matter what. Okay. Um... I'll tell you what I'd like to do, only with your permission. Uh, your daughter is back in the green room. Uh, I'd like to go back and visit with her for just a minute. You'll be able to Absolutely. see it out here. Everybody, you'll be able to watch this out. I'm just going to step back, talk to her for a right. minute, sure. and I'll be right back, okay? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. You guys will be able to watch on the monitors here, so just take a second. Hey, how are you? Hi. I'm Dr. Phil. Hi. Good to meet you. Good to meet you, too. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a little bit of a rocky ride living yeah. in that house, huh? What bothers you the most? Um, it bothers me that they, they always fight, and they have no consideration for anything else that's happening around them, and mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just really hard. So when it gets really volatile, where they get yelling and screaming and even get physical sometimes. Mm -hmm. Take me through that moment. What do you think and feel in that moment? In that moment, when it starts to get physical, I feel like I just get so pumped up and my heart starts racing. And I just feel like I'm afraid that one of them is going to be taken away to jail or something bad like that's going to happen or something's going to, someone's going to get really hurt. So it scares you? It scares me a lot. Jail or injury? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you want them to understand about what this does to you? I would really like them to understand that it, it hurts me the way I feel. I just hope that they just realize what they've been doing and just have like an aha moment. And so they'll realize and it'll just be really calm. Is there anything you'd like to ask me? 
Um, I'd like to ask you if there's any possibility that it can be fixed. The answer is yes. There's more than a possibility that it can be fixed. Um, it needs to be fixed, and it, it's going to get fixed. Because let me tell you something. Um, you're right to be concerned, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't have to be. Yes. And I am so sorry that they have involved you in these adult issues. Uh, and they're going to stop doing that. And I'm going to make sure they stop doing that if I have to haunt them till the end of the world. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, so how would that be? That would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm your guy, all right? All right, I'm going to go back and talk to your parents a little all bit. All right. All right. All right, thank you. I'm not leaving until you give me a hug. All right, talk to you soon. Thank you. be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Or call 323-461-PHIL. My kids have witnessed this fighting. The bottom line is, our family. you destroyed our family. She has a mouth that would offend the devil. 101,000 plus paying payroll checks in your pocket is not enough? The things she says in front of our children just do not belong. Well, during the last segment, I had the privilege of talking to the 12-year-old daughter of Bob and Dorothy, a couple torn apart by allegations of infidelity and violent outburst. Um, what do you think of what your daughter had to say? Very accurate. I, f I feel sorry. It breaks my heart completely because I know it's I, I know how it's affecting her because I see it and I feel it. Shame on both of you. I mean, I clearly just talked to the brains of the outfit uh, back there. I mean, she's your daughter is very bright. You're behaving like a couple of idiots. I know. First off, I see absolutely no objective evidence whatsoever that your husband has cheated on you in any way. And I would tell you if I had, and I, so, I mean, I don't have any problem with that, with telling you that. What I see is that you have taken some parts and pieces of things and constructed this, this very scary fantasy, uh, but I see no objective evidence that that he has cheated. Just for argument's sake, let's assume that. Um, and we can also assume the flip side. Let's assume that he is cheating. You know what you do if that's the case? You either decide that you want to leave or you want to get professional help or you want to whatever. But there's no theory under which your behavior is justified. No theory. None. I mean, smashing out windows and cars and and attacks and all of that stuff. I know. Do not do that. That is a wrong model for her. If you want to decide when you leave here that he's cheating on you, then get help or get a divorce. I but do. you don't do what you're doing. I understand. I actually did a timeline and pinpointed exactly what I think happened in Dorsey's life that may have triggered all of this. I'll let you know what that is after the break. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. There are alternative explanations for why this may seem so real to you. Because I did a timeline of all of this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I just tell you, if you were, if I was seeing you privately mm -hmm. in my office, if we were doing therapy, which mm -hmm. I do not do, do not call me. <laughs> I would look at this timeline and I would notice that about the time you started getting really upset was about the time your father passed away. 
you have a history of extreme behavior. You have said you were a shopaholic. You have said you were addicted to prescription drugs. You can get addicted to a concept or an idea where it consumes you and everything about your life becomes about stalking, investigating, looking, sure. finding, and pretty soon we start to fashion fantasy into reality where it starts to fit our theory. And as we often do here, I'm, I'm going to offer to you as a gift to arrange some very specialized evaluation, help, and counseling for you. I'd appreciate and that. And then at some point, to add him from a couple standpoint, but first, I want to figure out what's going on with you. I, I would really and appreciate that. And I don't that. mean just to send you for therapy. I mean, I want to evaluate you biochemically, neurologically, and otherwise. Yeah. And and, so and, and and help you know. And I, I think as things calm down, you you may see things very, very differently. Mm. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Does this sound like a plan? It sounds like an excellent plan, All like right. unbelievable plan. And every situation needs a hero, and you need to let it be you. Whatever you have to do, stop this yelling and screaming in front of that daughter. Con because the, both of you are doing it. Consider it done. And I mean, you Over. both owe that girl an apology. You need to say, I'm sorry. We are going to do, we're going to behave like rational adults and get this fixed. I agree. Okay. You this is a word. process. This is our gift to you. We will do that. Thank you, sir. All right. We've got to stop. I'd like to thank all of my guests for today. For more information, you can go to drphil.com. We appreciate you being here. All right. Thank Thanks so much. Thank you guys.